Now that the installation process is complete, you're going to want to do a gas and a water leak test on your appliance, starting with making sure that the test pressures are 40 inches of water column, and then verifying that the power switch is in the off position. Then you can turn the gas supply on and pressurize the unit with gas. Once that's complete, check your appliance and all the gas connections for leaks with a leak detection liquid or an equivalent gas leak detector. Repair any gas leaks if you find any. Once those are repaired, repeat that process and make sure that all of the connections are not loose and that there are no gas leaks. Then make sure that the gas supply pressure is between 11 and 14 inches of water column. Now let's do the water leak test. Start by turning on the water supply to get that water flowing in the unit and open up your faucets until all the air and water flow smoothly through the system. Then you'll check all your connections for leaks by sight and by feel. If there are anything that needs to be repaired, go ahead and repair it and then repeat as necessary. Now let's do a functional test on your appliance by confirming that there is a steady water flow and no air in your system. If pulsating, have the water pump setting adjusted. Then you're going to make certain all the valves that can mix hot and cold water are closed. Next, turn the power switch to on and verify that the light is turned on on your thermostat. If not, go to the thermostat and press the on button until it illuminates. Then you're going to turn on the gas supply and open a hot water faucet. Once that water starts to flow through your appliance, it'll turn on the burners and start heating up that water. The wall thermostat display will show the current temperature settings. Let's talk about operation. So we have a couple different specifications right here at the top. The factory default temperature of 115 degrees is what you're going to get when you pull it right out of the box. But you can have a range here of 95 degrees all the way up to 124 degrees. To get that specific temperature you're looking for, there's a couple different methods that you can use. You have point of use mixing method and single point use method. The first one, point of use, that's just like your home where you have your hot water, you turn that on and it's too hot, so you turn a little cold water, it mixes it together and gets what you're looking for. Now for the single point use method, you're going to actually turn the thermostat to the temperature you're looking for and not mix the cold water at all. And that's going to save you some water on your RV. The tankless water heater is equipped with a water control valve. It's located right here and it is default set to max flow. Now, for whatever reason, if it's less than 45 degrees Fahrenheit or it's, you have greater than 65 PSI at the inlet of the water heater, you're going to want to lower that down, which actually lets less water flow through the water heater. This is going to improve heater performance. When storing or relocating an RV, first you're going to want to turn the gas supply off. Then you'll come inside the water heater and turn the main switch to off. Next, you'll come in here and find the filter cover and remove it by turning it counterclockwise until it is removed. Then you will remove the drain plug. This will remove and drain out most of the water in the system. However, if it's less than 39 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to want to winterize the unit. Winterizing can be accomplished by blowing out the entire system, including the water heater. 
take time to isolate the water heater by closing off all faucets and drains and then removing the drain plug and the filter cover. The compressed air should not exceed 30 PSI and use a non-toxic antifreeze from the RV manufactured specifications. And next season, thoroughly flush the water heater with clean fresh water through the hot and the cold side. Don't forget to use your RV manufacturer's specifications to sanitize both the unit and the water heater. Now let's talk maintenance. We recommend that you inspect the gas system and installation every two years. Starting on the outside of the unit, we'll inspect the door frame and how it connects to the unit. Make sure that there are no cracks, separation, peeling of seals to the RV wall. Remove and reseal if necessary. Verify that the air inlet opening, which are louvers, are completely open and clear. Next, you'll inspect exhaust outlet tube here, and it, make sure it is completely open and clear and that there is nothing no debris inside there. Now let's take a look at the interior of the water heater. Open the door and verify no debris or extraneous combustible materials are present anywhere. Remove any item present and wipe clean the bottom of the housing. Inspect interior surface of housing for cracks or corroded areas that could allow penetration of gases into or out of the interior of the vehicle. Verify that the spark ignition cable between the controller and the igniter is securely in place and not shorted to any metal component. Inspect, clean, and replace your water filter by removing it and running water over it and getting all of those particulates out of the screen or replacing it. Turn on the power to the heater and inspect a bluish flame on the burner through this area right here. A ceiling ring is assembled on the chimney. Inspect it for cracks, breaks, and that it's in good condition. Make sure that the word inside printed on the inside of the seal faces the water heater. Now let's take a look at the back side of the water heater. Check wire connections are firmly in place with no signs of chafing or cracks in the insulation. Inspect the pressure safety valve to ensure that it is not leaking. We're going to test the pressure safety valve. This is done by turning this counterclockwise three to five times. Never do this while the water heater is hot. Check the drain hose for water. Water in the drain hose indicates the pressure safety valve is working properly. To perform the descaling process, you'll need a few ingredients. You'll need a water pump that's submersible in water, an empty bucket, two flexible hoses that you might find on your washing machine at home, similar to that anyway, several gallons of 5% distilled white vinegar, or you can just go out and purchase an entire kit that has all of this in it. The only difference between the two is this one had vinegar, and this one comes with a different chemical that actually doesn't take as long as the vinegar, but it's a little bit more expensive. To perform the step-by-step -step process, first turn off the power on the front of your water heater. That's that little switch right underneath the 10 amp fuse. 
and then close the gas valve on the RV itself. Make sure that there's no gas going to the water heater. Then you're going to close the hot and the cold water as well. That isolates the water heater so you can descale it. Then remove the hot and cold hoses from the water heater on the back of them. Just take them off. Then you're going to connect the flexible hoses in your kit to the hot and cold ports on there. So now you have just two hoses hanging off the back of the water heater. Then you're going to connect the cold water hose to the pump and put that pump inside the bucket. Then you're going to place the hot water hose in the bucket. So now you have both hoses connected to the water heater. One connects to the pump and one just hangs inside the bucket. Next, you'll fill up the bucket with that descaling liquid, whether it's the chemical from your kit or the vinegar that you purchased. Fill that up. Then you're going to turn on the pump. What that's going to do is it's going to pump that vinegar or chemical into the water heater, cycle it through, pulling all that scale off of there, and then putting that scale into the bucket, and then it rotates. Run that for 45 to 60 minutes. The 45-minute version, that's going to be your chemical because it works a little faster. And then for your vinegar, make sure you do it for the full 60 minutes. Then you're going to turn the pump off and drain your water heater. Now, you're going to pull the water filter off of there. And then underneath that is that drain cap. So pull that cap off too. Drain everything out. Once all that's out of there, then you're going to put those back on there. And then dump the bucket and use fresh water. And then do the same thing over again. That's going to flush that water heater out so you don't have any of that vinegar or chemical inside.